everybody, I'm Suzanne, and in today's video, we're going to play with some color. Now, I'm going to be painting a bull elk, a resting bull elk, and but the photograph that I was working from was just, it was, it was beautiful. Um, I liked the, the pose that the elk was in, but I just wanted to play with some color, and I wanted to play with cadmium red and cadmium yellow because it creates such a, an amazing glow in a painting. So I'm going to show you the finished piece, and this is this is how he turned out. Let's see if I can show you without the shine from outside. But you can see with all the cadmiums in this particular painting how much glow we have here in this bowl. So that is what we're going to do. And so you can sit back and watch, or you can paint along. Uh, a lot of this video is in real time. There's some there's some um, uh, uh, time lapse as well, but a lot of it is real time. So you should be able to get a good idea of how, how this was created. And if you'd like to do it, you can paint along. Remember folks, if there's any questions that you have about anything in this video, leave it in the comment section and I'll get to it. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That means a lot. And know that if you really like this type of video and want to see more, you can jump in on my Patreon channel. And also you can become a member here on my channel and your support on both those platforms really, really does help me immensely. Um, we'll be doing a lot more live streams and a lot of cool stuff getting ready to happen. So stay tuned and you will be a part of that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in to this beautiful bull elk. Today's colors for the reclining elk is yellow, French yellow ochre. I have raw umber, burnt sienna, raw sienna, burnt umber, and ivory black. These are all Michael Harding. I have titanium white, which is Windsor Newton. And then I have Italian green umber and terra vert, also Michael Harding. So I, I was very, eh, you know, I didn't put out a lot of paint because I've got a student coming in just a few and I just didn't want to waste it. So <laughs> here we go. Okay, so here's my setup right now. Um, I am painting on a wood panel, a cradled wood panel. So it's pretty deep and you can see, you can still see the wood grain here. I just did a very thin coat of acrylic uh, deep yellow on this, just so I'd have, you know, you've been seeing this color a lot lately. Um, and I've just done a rough sketch of this elk kind of reclining with his huge rack. Um, he could actually scratch his back with that rack. So uh, anyway, and I've got my paints right here. And we're going to see how far we can get before my student gets here. All right. I am going to just, as, as quickly as I can, just sort of uh, map out the area on this animal. Um, I'm going to leave the uh, background alone for a little bit. I'm taking some titanium white, yellow ochre, and you know one of the colors I should have had on here and I don't have it. Oh, it's some type of purple, some yellows, and kind of keep things down just a little bit. I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, um, ultramarine violet down just so I have something to mute. I didn't put any cool colors down. I realized after I and I'll probably need some blue, but. take a little bit of that and th this is going to immediately take down the yellow and gray this up a little bit for me and I'm gonna grab a little bit more a little bit more white and I'm just making this kind of interesting color here and I'm just gonna cover I'm just gonna go right up to the lines and you're probably thinking well why is she starting with this color first uh, since I usually do my darker colors first, right? But today, nah, I'm doing I'm doing it this way because I am going to try something kind of fun. Um, I'm, I always say I'm gonna, and then I don't do it. But let's see if I do it. I'm just using this very thinly, trying to get the shapes established here, and I may actually bring stuff out a little bit more. This kind of comes out a little bit more than my initial drawing. That's okay. Put a little bit of light in here. And there is kind of this, I'm, I'm taking a little bit of the uh, raw umber. 
if it's too red, I can grab a little bit of the green to it, knock it down just a little bit. I'm just really, and his leg, his hind leg is coming around here. I'm just being very loose initially. Wanted to maintain the shape of his body and his, let's see, and I'm grabbing a little, little bit of the ivory black here. And I can tell you, I've, I've, I've really shortened his body up a little too much. And I'm, I'm bringing this out. So you can see I'm just adding this little bit of this coolness to his. He's going to be laying in grass. Um, but I want to play with the, the background a little bit. I'm not really sure. Sometimes I, I just kind of jump into a piece. I don't always have it all planned out. I have a little tiny bit of burnt sienna. And again, this is Michael Harding's burnt sienna. So it's not my go-to burnt sienna, but it'll, it'll do. His tail's in here someplace. And I'm not really trying to uh, and I see my student looking for her spot. So it's always like I'm trying to work as fast as I can. And she's cruising looking for a spot. Very darker color, you know, much darker color here. And actually, I'm gonna take raw umber to make this darker value down here. So I you know, again, I am going to just I'm just suggesting where things are going here at this point. Now I'm gonna take the uh, Sienna. Thin it down quite a bit. And I can actually put a little bit of um, um, I get some. Uh, Bit, but I'm just doing this for now. I'm going back to the burnt umber, it's a little bit more intense. And I don't want to get too caught up in the detail yet, although it's really hard to not want to. to feel like I have some start of this elk and I can tell you I'll be working on this. I have a Tuesday night class that I teach so after my this is over this class is over at five I'll be right back to this piece for a while. Okay I'm gonna have to stop because she's gonna walk in the door I know it. Okay so I can kind of see where everything's going here. It's a race against time. It's a race against time. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the yellow ochre. Mix that in there. No, that's not gonna work for me. I'm not even gonna attempt to do the antlers yet because that's a really major part. And of course, I'll be able to put a lot of the. Now his his front leg kind of is up in this area, and this brush is a really frayed old brush. It's time for Sue to buy some new brushes. That's a gift. There's going to be tall grasses, so I'm not going to worry about that yet. His ear. We'll just leave it at that. I can actually, that's, I'm actually doing pretty well, <laughs> considering she's not here yet. I don't want to get too nuts, because I really do want to do some kind of fun stuff with the, um, with, uh, and I probably have to bring this, it's going to be leveled out a little bit more this hump and then it comes down. See, that's what I'm saying. For me, a sketch is really just that. It's a very rough idea of where things are going and they tend to change. <laughs> 
<laughs> they morph a little bit, and that's okay. Keep walk looking over my shoulder for Miss Betty. So Betty, if you're watching this video, <laughs> and she's one of my wonderful, wonderful, faithful, amazing students, and she's a very, very talented woman, and she's she should be walking in the door in just any second. She's gonna watch this video one day, and she's gonna, ah, you were talking about me, I know you were. I'm like, yeah, I was. All right, so I'm just, you can see I'm just doing a little, little sketch. Um, yeah, that tail's gonna be over in this area someplace, but I'll, I'll work it in. Um, so you can still see the yellow through it, right? I just wanted it, I'm being very, transparent as much as I can with the paints and I just wanted to kind of get the shape of this bull elk just laying um, and then I'll be very interested in really playing with a lot of the negative space in this piece so I kind of sketched on antlers but you know for me you know me the sketch is very likely to change and um, yeah that happens with me a lot and I'm watching I'm watching singer absolutely doors and I'm going to have to go get them. So here she comes. All right, guys, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, my, my class time with my student Betty is over. And I had a little bit of a lunch, or dinner rather. And now I am back to painting until the next class starts, which is at 6. <laughs> I'm busy. I'm a busy, busy girl. So I'm just really kind of popping in where I see you know, a little color shift here and there. Um, and uh, you know, he's kind of bending over and he's using those antlers. Now you don't see antlers here, but I'm gonna to try to get some antlers in. And I told you I did not, I'll just use the purple. I, the only cool color I have really on here is um, the ivory black and I have the cobalt violet. I'm using that to kind of suggest, well, I'm gonna put a little bit of burnt umber cobalt violet as my dark value for this. And um, I'm gonna kind of put some of the dark values into the antlers. Um, and it kind of comes down. I probably should have a pointed round for this. Okay, so it's a whole nother day. Um, I've added some more paint to my palette. I added a little bit of uh, cad red light and some Indian yellow, as well as a little bit of ultra blue. Of course, I already had the cobalt violet down. Now, I wanna create some glow here. And I just have this, this sketch. And I have to tell you folks, I know this is just this acrylic background and I like this color because it does have that glowy warmth to it. Um, and I want to make this bull elk look like he's glowing. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix a, a, a background color because I want the antlers to stand out too. So I'm gonna paint this kind of weird. Um, I'm gonna try to work around and make this, this a very dark, dark, dark cadmium black. I don't know, I'm gonna mix cad and black and see if I can't get this kind of color I'm looking for. So this is experimentation, folks. I am just kind of winging it. So I'm gonna take this CAD, and I probably should have put some more CAD on my palette, so, you know, because I got a lot of background here. And 
but at the same time it's probably like I said it's, it's somewhat experimentation <laughs> in my part so yeah we'll see what happens let's just see what happens but it takes my ivory black and I'm gonna mix it in um, to this cad red and I want it to be very dark but still warm and I can tell you I'm gonna need some more ivory black so we're gonna mix I'll tell you what, let's speed this up until I get the color and you don't have to watch me mix paint. So this does add some glow. Using CAD, man, you can't go wrong with any of the CADs. I'm just saying. It, it just makes things just light up. And I kind of want to set this this bull elk. I'm probably going to give him some steam coming out of his mouth because, come on, he's he needs some steam. I'm just going to, since I got the wet paint, I'm going to see what happens if I just use a little bit of um, titanium white with... Um, Indian yellow and I'm just gonna kind of because it's I just want to warm this yeah, that's not gonna do it I'm just kind of creating this mist if you will like it's just mist rising up and um dispersing probably would be, oops, once you start picking up some of the black, the ivory black, you know, you don't want that. So, you know, I'm grabbing some of the cad yellow because of the opacity. I need it to be a little bit more opaque. Add a little titanium white in the middle. Alright, so you kind of have to work this while it's wet. Make him look like he's smoking. Because you know how elks are. You know how elk can be. Dizzy. And, and when I do this, I'm barely tickling the canvas, y'all. I mean, it's substrate. This is not canvas, this is wood panel. I'm barely tickling it. Okay, so sometimes you just best just let that kind of sit for a while and uh, let it marinate it's you know you want to work the wet while you have you know while you can and that's why I'm just kind of dispersing this a little bit just right here because it's wet um, uh, you, I'm not gonna mess with the inside of the, the steam if you will I've been playing with steam a lot if you remember one of my pieces you probably didn't see it on You'll see it on my website. Um, it's called Steam Engine of a big Belgium draft horse pulling logs. And um, I had a lot of fun with that. Okay, I'm kind of going to feel this around a little bit. And let me take a look and uh, see what my next step is going to be in illuminating this bull elk. I feel like I have to work some of this, the shine or the glow, while it's wet. So eh, let me think about it for a second since this is new to me.
bit of the uh, Purple Lake. I'm gonna start hitting some of the dark, darker values here with the Purple Lake. I like this color. Um, I can always go back and change. I may just go ahead and put this on here like this. Here in this area, we're waiting for the big storms to come. We're expecting some a lot of rain from the, the um, Hurricane Ian. I'm putting some uh, cad reds in here. I'm using a number two evergreen filbert. And since I'm the reference I'm using it's, I'm changing the lighting um, of this animal to suit my uh, my lighting situation, I guess. So I'm going to adjust, I'm doing some adjustments here. And I'm going to have to use switching over to brown matter here. And uh, so. I almost wanted this to very be very glowy. That was what I was kind of going for here. I have to have some of the coolness on the center or interior aspect of the animal to really appreciate the glow, if that makes sense. So I'm kind of going in between using the Purple Lake and uh, the CAD Red Light. So I think you can see what I'm doing here. I'm playing. And I like, I'm having fun with this. This is fun colors for me. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with the body yet because the body, uh, it's going to be lighter. Right, I am going to switch brushes to a smaller brush. This is just a little tiny, um, tiny brush here. This happens to be a creative mark. It's actually a very inexpensive, cheap, cheap, cheap brush. Um, it's a mimic, so it's like Kalinsky. Here in America, it's very hard to get Kalinsky brushes anymore. Um, interesting fact here, they've, um, because the Kalinsky, for some reason, decided that they were going to, in the wild, they're somewhat endangered, but this, the, the, the hair from these brushes is not harvested in the wild, but it's, I think it's only in America that you can't get them. Um, as a wildlife person, I get it. You know, if it was truly an actual endangerment of an animal, I wouldn't want to use them. And I, and this is actually not even a real Kalinsky. This is just synthetic. But I tend to like to use synthetics over natural hair brushes. And it's, I'm not, it's not an ethical thing so much for me as it is just a performance thing. But it's, you know, as an animal person, I, you know, if I don't have to use a, a hair, I'm not, I'm not going to. And I'm just putting in a little detail here. I'm going to probably make this a little bit warmer here, but a little bit cooler in some other aspects here. I'm going in with just uh, some um, ivory black. It's 
not really showing up. I probably need to use my uh, one of my other blacks. I'm gonna work on the head, I think, anyway, closer to the front of the head here. I'm gonna taking a little bit of the Michael Harding um, burnt sienna. Now, and it's so different than than some of the other burnt siennas that I've used. It really is. I'm gonna put this little ear here. And it is because it's, um, I'm gonna put a little, a little heat here. I usually use, my go-to burnt sienna is um, Windsor Newton, but this seemed to be the color that I wanted to use. I'm going to lift up this part of his head, because I'm, I would assume that the light would hit it here too. Since I'm kind of winging it here, I want to lay my hand on this so bad, but I've already filled it in. Okay. His nostril would be pretty high on the top of his nose. just to bring him some heat right here on his lower jaw. Um, I'm gonna go with a little bit of purple with a little bit of the wood because this would be the nose leather area of this animal's face, so.
see how I have that loaded? Or can you see how I have that little tip of paint right there? Right there. That's when you let the goops do the work. So I'm going to just barely touch that little. There, just like that. It doesn't look like that difficult here, but. Lake, which is a wonderful color. I'm using um, my pinky on the edge of this panel because it's helping me um, it's helping me. It's just helping me. Okay, so that's that. Then it does go down here. I may have to move some of this out a little bit. Some of that. Hmm. mediums I'm using today are the oil, the linseed oil. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna do some of the lighter values. My little nosy poodle boy singer's poking me. He's such a good boy. He comes over and <laughs> he rubs up on me. He's so funny. What are you doing, singer? animal's head, but yet yeah, give him the, trying to work his values here a little bit. cool on the interior aspect of the Yeah. 
here. And I think this is a really good color, this lighter purpley color for the interior part of his fur inside of his ear. And I'll probably use this color also for a lot of the body. Because this is, um, like I said, I've just completely changed So, because I just wanted to play with glowing. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know what? You gotta play with it, right? You gotta have fun and learn new things. And for me, this is kind of a learning process. I'm really trying to um, just really have fun with the... Um... There we go, I just wanna look at that. I'm having fun. And I'm using, you know, more cads in the background, but cooling them down or, you know, basically making shades is what I'm doing. I'm just adding ivory black to them, but. I'll get it a little too impasto and I gotta really take it down a little bit. And um, you see some of the error, errors, if you will, I need to correct. And I'm going to go a little bit, I'm gonna put a little bit of light on the edge of his ear. So I have a feeling it would pick it up. So this is my Cad Yellow Titanium White Mixture. I'm just kind of popping it in there a little bit. A little bit more space here. It's I. Let's see what we can do here. Using a little bit of uh, linseed oil. I didn't refresh my palette when I got in this morning, so I'm just kind of using what I had down from the other day, and it's still working. Under the eye. colors to use. And I will be adding some light to this. Now if you're familiar with 
the elk, they do have a little gland, a little gland kind of in their eye area when they're bugling. It, it oftentimes opens up. I don't, I'm gonna put a little bit of light on first. He's got, I'm gonna have him rolling his eye. Now, I'm, I'm not necessarily suggesting that he's bugling, but I want him to be I'm trying to work with a brush and it's, this brush is not as little and fine as I would like it to be. I'm going to switch brushes. How is that for fine? This is a 10-0 little tiny, tiny, tiny brush. It's a red dot, which is a synthetic sable. It's a pointed round 10, aught, 10 slash aught. It's itty bitty. And it's a rosemary and this is in that set. I think it's the first time I've ever used this brush, so. Boy, oh boy, that's itty bitty. Can you see how little that is? Tiny, tiny. Tea tiny. his due here. I want him looking good. Take a little bit of cadmium red and mix the purple lake in it. And then 
this will go up a little bit more. There's like a little bit of a break right there. I'm taking cad yellow and I'm adding purple lake to it. And then a little titanium white. Try that. So he would have a little bit of that. This you got to ask yourself if where you need to put detail and where don't you need to put detail. If you don't need to, Yeah, now that I got this little fun brush, I'm actually going to play with it a little bit. So where I would kind of was doing this here, um, I'm going to bring this out a little bit more. So I'm going to take some of the yellow, mix a little bit more titanium white to it. more sense anyway. Because he would have that to the front of his body. You know, it's, it is fun to experiment and play with light, especially if you don't have the lighting situation that you wanted for your painting in your reference. So yeah, I am actually playing quite a bit. I'll light him up a little bit more on the front of his I mean, uh, sorry, cad red. I'm digging him. I am digging him. Let me pull this out a little bit now. I just uh, flashed over my phone. It said for me to start my day with a little pep talk in the mirror. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna probably leave it alone, just leave it alone. Sometimes you just gotta. I don't know, that's probably the wrong color. All right, now I gotta think about the body. <sighs> Let me think about the body. Okay, so I have this elk body, right? And this color is pretty much like my reference, but since I have cooled everything about the elk down except where the lights actually hitting them. I've got to cool the rest of them down too. So I've took, took some um, titanium white, purple lake, and um, some of Michael Harding's, um, oh goodness, what is it? It's the, it's Michael Harding's um, 
raw sienna, okay? You see I'm just mixing it here. And I'm using a, um, this is an evergreen filbert, this is number two. And I'm gonna go ahead and start suggesting some of this in here. Um, it's gotta be a little bit cooler than what I initially, I'm just gonna, but I may have some more of the warm light hitting them in the front. I'm going back over some of the area that I already started with, and I have this in here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that a little bit darker. bit of the uh, burnt umber in there. He's, he's got his leg, so this is his hind leg here, and it's actually extended um, out. He has his leg kind of going out this way. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of this in here. And I'm also going to, I'm just going in with these, kind of making this dark, cool, darker value in here. This whole back end would probably not be catching that much light. I'd rather start dark. <laughs> and I'm going with the, the Purple Lake. And so, of course, the Purple Lake does offer, yeah, purples, right? <laughs> Just as the name implies. And if I have that with the yellows, uh, you know, I get a little excited about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and cool his butt right on down here. I'm just even, I'm being very loose with this. I'm actually suggesting, you know, I'm going with the direction of his, his fur. And, um, and I'll probably have, um, some other, um, what am I trying to say here? There'll be some more contrast in here. I'm just kind of moving it around. I'm just trying to get a feeling here. And uh, again, I, I will work with my eyes sort of shut <laughs> because that's what I do often. So his his whole hind quarters, his leg, I'm gonna put a little bit more of the, um, this is, the Michael Harding, um, Raw sienna, and I get, I get folks. If you know me, and if, and if you're my student, you'll know that I say I'm not a big raw sienna fan. I love what the color, the hue, looks like, but as far as dealing with such a transparent paint, I, I end up making something that looks similar to it. Usually, I'm mixing actually other transparent paints, but for some reason, um, it always disappears on me if I use it out of the tube. Michael Harding's is a little different. I um. I like it quite a bit and I've been it's kind of like I'm getting I'm falling in love again with a color that I just always like but just never hmm. so I'm suggesting that this is where his leg is and his leg is going to come out into this area so I kind of have to be pretty intense here this hit it in the grass here and that's that's fine because I kind of wanted to his front leg is kind of he's got it kind of pulled underneath himself but I'm probably gonna not make that an issue um, because I'll have some grasses coming up onto him here but I gotta kind of have to have the, the concept of where his leg might actually be and it would probably go out as far as to here so I'm looking Suggesting that that's his leg. I don't have to put any detail in there. I just got to suggest that that's there. I'm using the purple leg to do that. I'm leaving some of the warm colors in there. Just suggest there's. You know, sometimes these guys get all. 
they're ruddy. They may actually get into some stuff here. They may get mud on them and splash around the mud and chasing the ladies. Folks, if you're enjoying today's video, give me a thumbs up. That always helps me. And also know that you can become a member of my channel. I'd love to have you. That kind of support goes a long way. All right, so you can see how purple I've made his body. Like him. Um, one of my uh, the galleries that carries my work, Twigs and Leaves, in um, Waynesville, North Carolina. If I give them an elk painting, they sell my elk painting, <laughs> which is that's pretty good. That's a pretty good thing to have happen. Oops, that's too much. Very likely, if I don't sell it before, be headed to Twigs and Leaves. And I'm using this color, and I'm just kind of suggesting that there's fur, and I'm not really putting a ton of detail in here. I'm just just a little bit up uh, using the, um, um, the Michael Harding raw sienna. a little um, burnt umber in it. I have some, I'm trying to do it. It's not doing what I want it to do. I'm going to add some black to it. This, his hip is actually comes out a little bit more than I have it here. I'm going back in with the purple. I look like where this was going. I just need to give him a little bit more hip. Bring some of this black into here. So, you know, again, this is going to be a lot of. Um, that's his little tail. There's going to be a lot of grass in the foreground. I haven't gotten there yet, but I don't want to do. You know, there's not too much that I need to do here. So 
So just so you know, guys, Purple Lake, great color. You guys should get some. If you don't already have it in your box of tricks, get it. So this kind of comes straight down, down into this part. But again, I will have some more. grasses and stuff in here. I changed my whole because I gave you all these colors initially because that's how I was looking at the my reference but since I changed um, my my bulls coloring because I went with the glow right um, I didn't use nearly as much of that as I thought I was going to I'm gonna, so I gotta have this value here is gonna be a lot lighter really like his abdomen so when you look at his how he's chunked up in this little how he's, so here's your rump here's your hind quarter your legs and this is the um, abdomen area so he's just lying down and I'm using the edge of my brush to make this just a little bit of suggesting some detail here without really putting a lot of detail here so I'm actually using my reference to suggest where the lights going but I'm changing the color I'm digging him. I am so digging this boy here, right here. His hip. Let's give him a little bit more light on the very top of his hip here. Now, I'm going to suggest that he's got a little bit of other light shining through here because I'm not going to go and do a lot of detail on this. Think. I always say that and then I go change my mind. I'm um, the glasses because you know, I'm old. Alright, I'm going to add some more light on the front end of this guy. Put a little bit of oil in it just so it kind of rolls with me here. Him up all over everybody place else. I gotta light him up where I think light would hit him. So it's the it's the titanium white and uh, yellow, um, cad yellow. But I'm going to lose some of this because I know I'm putting grass in. So and my dog is dreaming. Can you hear him? He's he barks and howls and <laughs> when he's dreaming.
and I'm not going to run it all the way up the body because the light wouldn't hit it. And we are done folks this was a whole lot of fun I went in a different direction than I thought I was going to go but I kind of like the direction I went um I used more CADs on this piece than I have in a long time on any other piece and you know I just I liked trying to learn to create glow now I know I've got a lot of work to do and trying to figure out more <laughs> glowy techniques so to speak uh, but this folks was fun I had a ball and I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions at all about anything that I covered in today's video just go ahead and uh, leave it in the comment section I'll get to it and uh, yeah so here we go a little close up I'll have to come up with a neat little title if you've got a neat example of or suggestion of a title for this piece go ahead and leave that in the comment section as well okay that's it Ta-da! See, that was fun, right? Anytime I get to play with any kind of cadmium color, well, let, I should, let's just say any kind of color, I have a ball. And this, this particular piece really was kind of an experiment for me because I was going off, <laughs> off the grid. <laughs> I was going off the, um, the, what my actual reference had as far as my colors. So initially when I put down my colors on my palette, I went over with them, over what colors I actually used with you. But you see, I kept adding, 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 uh, you know, more cadmiums and I had a lot of fun. And because I was working with cadmium yellow, I used quite a bit of, <laughs> that's the morning dove telling me what time it is. I used quite a bit of um, compliments in there. So with the cad reds and oranges, I did introduce a little bit of ultra blue. And with the yellows, I used, um, I think I, I used cobalt, violet, and um, what was it? Purple Lake. Purple Lake was a lot of my dark values that was on the elk. And when I changed the body of the color of the elk to a more cooler, color and I needed the cool to bounce off the hot right it, it created the balance that I needed so 
I hope you enjoyed today's painting. And if you haven't already given me a thumbs up, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. That really does help. And know that you can become a member and support me even further through my membership on my YouTube channel. And you can also become a patron on my Patreon channel. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you next time. Bye.